actually in 2018, there started to be talk about a nine to five sequel and they've talked about it for a lot of years, but 2018, it really came around. So we kind of said to each other, well, there's been the movie, the song, the TV show, the musical, now the sequel, what's ever had that? So that was the idea we had to maybe try to document all of the nine to five life. Everybody was very nervous about the movie because it was three female leads. The core message in 9 to 5 was, you deserve better. Women said, wait a damn minute, I'm not going to take it anymore. So then Camille, through different projects that she had worked on and worked on with us, reaching out to her, she's great at researching, she loves to dive into things. So she called back and told me, listen, there's a movement behind the movie. There was an organization before Jane ever thought about the movie. So it just kind of really worked as the fandom of nine to five and the feminism of the working women's movement with her. We came together and we think we've made a great film that's going to be informative and entertaining to a lot of people. Did Dolly say anything to you about it or did you talk to her about it while this was coming into fruition? Only her manager, um, Steve Summers, who is an EP on the film, we talked to him about the idea and he thought it was a great idea. He said it's a great title. And four years later, he can't believe where we're sitting with this, with all of the cast interviewed, the new Kelly and Dolly. But he, knew, he did help us get Dolly. He's our creative director, Steve Summers, but he helped us get Dolly. He said, I think if I can sit y'all down with Dolly, the rest of the doors will start to open. And that's exactly what happened. So we got her in February of 2019. And then 2019, February, and then we got Lily and Jane and everybody rolled in after that, after Dolly. What was Dolly's reaction when you first talked to her about it? Camille interviewed her, so go ahead, Camille. Ah, well, I mean, we, uh, Steve approached Dolly and she was very excited by the project. Uh, she wanted to know, of course, a little bit more. And once we told her the outline that it was also about working women, she became very she became very excited and wanted to be involved. Well, and the climate in the workplace for women hasn't changed that much. And there's been a lot with Me Too movement and equal pay and ERA not passing, et cetera, et cetera. And as each of those things happened, I mean that that really plays into what you have in this film, correct? Yes, it does. I mean, there's 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 numerous things. There's you know a, a equality. Um, there's you know equal pay. There's childcare. There's uh, maternity leave. All of those things don't exist like they you know they don't exist now. They didn't exist forty years ago. And I think it's a a shock. I think it's a shock to me too because I'm Australian and we have a lot of those things. Sexual harassment is pervasive. It doesn't matter what country you're in. It is everywhere all of those things about nine to five the movie women are still fighting for it's so important that women realize that they're seen but my lord it's 40 years now and it's still important we've got so much more to do nine to five. in every movie especially in a documentary there's always that moment where something that is completely unexpected you never thought you'd learn a uh, pops up in, for each of you in this movie what what was that that uh, that nugget that that moment that said wow i never i never imagined that that could have happened i think mine would be just finding out through the interviews and stuff like we first started with the activists and we got some people with the era that women still aren't in the constitution of the united states that's just shocking to me that women are not in the constitution so you know I, that was my big thing I think mine would be because we followed the timeline of nine to five. So in 2009, when we're in the musical section where you have Alice and Janie and a lot of the actresses that played in the musical to find out that Harvey Weinstein was a producer on oh the musical, gosh. find out he was a producer. This was, you know, year, six years before Me Too really hit. So it, that was pretty shocking to me. We could not believe when we found that out. Well, we guessed when we saw that as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So I think I think for me, uh, minimum wage in America, I think is is quite shocking. And then also the inequality of pay. So for black women, it's 61 cents in the dollar for Latino women. It's 54 cents in the dollar that a white man would make. So I think that was very surprising for me as well. The uh, interviews you do with Dolly Jane and Lily uh, now looking back on on things. What surprised you about what they said? I mean, I know that I, I was surprised to hear that Dolly never having, only having been to Universal Studios on a tour and never having acting before, 
memorized everybody's part for the original movie. Dolly was first and then Lily was second. And we purposely left Jane for last because Jane was really the mastermind with Bruce Gilbert, her producing partner behind the whole thing. So we really wanted to fill in the blanks, but just the way each of them laid out and we interviewed them separately. So you could just feel the bond that they formed back in 1979. And it still carries through today, even with Grace and Frankie and all of the things they've got coming up. When you get the three of them together, it's just an amazing moment. So we were very honored to have all of them interview for our film. And Dabney, who's 91. Mr. Hart is 91, and he's still sharp as a tack. He, yes. was, he was a fun interview. We interviewed him right before COVID hit February 2020, right before everything shut down. He was our final interview. So we were very lucky to get that one done. Exploring Lily Tomlin. Here's a comic genius, and she was taking apart this script. She really wasn't enthralled with what was going on until something happened. Can you can you tell us that story? We didn't know this till we interviewed her. We never knew that Lily was ready to pull out. She um, apparently, because of making nine to five and seeing herself on those dailies where the birds weren't there and the little animals weren't there, to this day, she does not watch dailies because she felt she looked so bad in that she wanted to pull out of the picture. So we thought that was just such a funny story. And she'll tell you that she still does not watch daily. She doesn't like to see herself what she's telling. And the other thing that really moved her forward is they literally had got, probably got tired of her turning it down. So they had already gone to Gilda Radna. They flew to see Gilda on Saturday Night Live. And when Lily found out Gilda was going to hit, she goes, oh, God, if it's a hit, you know, Gilda's going to hit it. So she, that was another thing that really moved her forward. She's like, I think I need to take this. And then her partner told her, you better take this role because Jane wrote it for you and Dolly. So yeah wow the hero of this movie and unfortunately he's not here to uh to mm. to bask in the glow of it is colin the original director colin of this movie. Yes. and and you really give him his due in this movie i think can you talk a little bit about what you learned about him camille uh yeah i mean colin was actually australian and a lot of people don't know that he grew up in australia and he came out here and at, while at university, he actually wrote Harold and Maud, which was, you know, has become an absolute cult classic. And so when he was approached to do this, you know, he jumped at the, at the chance because he's so good with comedy. And as Lily said, you know, sometimes Colin knew where the laughs were more than she was, where she did. And, and, you know, and there was that little bit of moment where she was like, no, as you said before, I don't want to do this script but then realized that Colin, you know, really, really was excited about, you know, doing this film and, and doing this comedy. Well, he did, and he went on to do other comedies, Foul Play, yeah. Yes, Little Foul Play. House in Texas, and so on and so forth. But he really had the sensibility of this movie. Uh, he took it to heart. It, it, it's very clear how the movie uh, was directed and how it was edited, that he really, he really got the message. He got, he was, he was a guy who got it. Well, yes, absolutely. And not, and not only that, but the you know, Lily and Jane and, and um, Dolly has, seemed to have a lot of fun in the original doing what they had to uh, to get Damney Coleman to be just and outrageous. Yes, they had to really fight for Dabney because the networks didn't want him. They wanted like Richard Dreyfuss or Steve Martin. They wanted a big star in Dabney's part. And and, you know, Bruce Gilbert really went to toe for that and said, no, the women are the stars of the picture. And Lily even says they didn't want to do it because they'd never had women lead a film at that time. So they really were breaking a lot of boundaries there when they made that movie. There's been so many different lives of nine to five and we've kind of captured all of them. And now we've even revamped the song with Kelly Clarkson, which I think is going to blow people's minds. So we're so excited about that, too. So. Yeah, that, that seemed to be one of the worst kept secrets in show business. <laughs> yes, I told Camille we could make a documentary just on the making of that duet with Dolly and Kelly Clarkson. It, it has not been easy. <laughs> what was so difficult about it? Well, just, you know, there's, you've got labels and, and this and that schedules. And, and schedules. And, you know, they've gone in the studio and recorded footage singing the song together, which is in the end credits. And. A lot of people don't know how hard it is to choreograph Dolly Parton and Kelly Clarkson to make those things happen, but we have been able to pull it they off. They both got a lot of stuff going on. My goodness, we we cut down to like 92 minutes, but we have so many hours of footage. We talked about like a 10-part docu-series because we've got so much stuff. <laughs> I'm so, sure you do. But we've cut it into a documentary, so 
I mean, who knows? In 10 years at the 50 year, we may have a docu-series with all of the stuff that couldn't make it in there because we've documented everything that has to do with nine to five and then some. So uh, the world knows the song nine to five, but it's been 40 years since the original movie came out three genera at least three generations. Uh, did you find that there wasn't that there were a lot of people under, let's say, 30 who had no idea that there was a nine to five movie originally? Well, a lot of people remember seeing it and a lot of people just know the song because it's probably one of Dolly's three biggest songs and it's so well known. But really, we're so glad we got like a Kelly Clarkson because she's a whole different demographic. She's going to get radio play. I mean, they really they're going to roll this song out in a big way. It probably around the time we get a streamer. So it's just re bringing a whole new generation up like our niece, our niece. She didn't know anything about nine to five and she had heard Dolly's original song, but she loves Kelly Clarkson. And so this is a whole new version. So it kind of educates a whole new demographic. So our, our hopes are kind of that, you know, with the new song, with the success of the documentary, we would love to see a lot of people go back and revisit nine to five just to show you where we were. Cause you know, we do show a, a good amount of scenes, but we obviously don't show the whole movie and it's worth people seeing it. And we would love for somebody at Disney to say, hey, you know, maybe it's time for us to like green light that sequel again, because they're all relevant. They're all here in our documentary and they all want to be a part of it. They just need a good script and a reason why they would come back 40 years later. So I think that can happen. And obviously, if the ERA passed, we would be over the moon if we had that happen as well, because we really give a call to action in this film. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And I think that the lyrics, once the, you know, the new generation hears them, will identify with them and be able to relate to them as well. Well, yeah. Steve Summers, our creative director, he said, I've probably heard that song a thousand times, but until I heard it the way they did it, I finally heard the words that Dolly wrote and how powerful they are. 